Well, okay, so um, welcome everyone to uh, today's Indie Zoom seminar. So uh, before the seminar, I want to have an announcement that um, from next month on, or actually next week, uh, we're gonna start the summer break. <clears throat> so um, as usual, um, uh, the tradition of Emu Zoom, we're gonna have two times Emu Zoom now every week. So uh, be prepared. Uh, I'm gonna to put the advertisement on the website and probably also in on the social medium, just uh, stay tuned. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's get started. So um, it's really, really my great pleasure today. We have a treat um, to welcome uh, really my um, long-term collaborator and um, friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Koji Zhao uh, from uh, NIH uh, to offer us a, um, a lecture today. So Koji currently is a senior investigator in the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, NIH. Uh, he is also chief of <clears throat> epigenome biology and then director of system biology center. So could you actually uh, receive his undergrad degree from uh, Changwei Normal College uh, in Weifang and then his uh, master degree from uh, Northeast Normal University uh, in Changchun. So um, then he uh, continued his PhD uh, training from University of Geneva in Switzerland um, he was a, a Damon uh, Ruyong uh, Water uh, Winchell uh, Cancer Research Postdoc Fellow at Stanford afterwards. So Kaji actually um, joined the uh, NIH in the uh, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute uh, to start his independent research program in 1999 as a, and was appointed as a senior investigator in 2007. And further, uh, because his outstanding performance, he became a director of the System Biology Center in 2011. So I think a lot of us probably already know uh, more or less of Koji's contribution in, um, in genetic and then epigenetic uh, 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 research. Uh, his lab is known for um, uh, their uh, genomic and epigenetic work on immune cell development and function. So uh, to study the epigenetic machinery of de development and the differentiation across the mammalian genome, um, um, actually, Koji actually developed his lab developed a lot of novel sequencing based methodology to study uh, epigenome, such as particular um, chip sequencing. And then, in addition, uh, Koji's lab also developed accompanying uh, computational strategies to analyze the wealthy of uh, resulting sequencing data. Uh, his lab also applied these techniques to mapping uh, epigenome in hemopoint uh, cell lineages. And then um, they also provided the first genome-wide description of nucleosome uh, positioning in the mammalian genome, describing the location and nucleosomes relative to um, transcription star site in T cells and demonstrating um, extensive nucleosome re reorganization in promoters and enhancer following T cell receptor signal. Um, actually, could you also investigating how epigenome dynamics uh, regulate membrane and function uh, during differentiation of induced um, iPS cells and then hemopoietic stem cells to various blood lineage. Um, they also aim to um, understand the three-dimensional organization of nucleus as it's related to uh, gene uh, expression. So as I said, Koji actually has really uh, contributed significantly in, um, in epigenome and the uh, genetic uh, biology. He received NIH Director Awards in recognition of innovative contribution that provide novel insight into epigenetic con control of gene expression and NIH Merit Awards, uh, both in 2007 and 2008. Uh, and he also uh, received a uh, APO awards for significant accomplishment in uh, uh, biomedical research, and it was elected as a fellow of American Association of Advanced Sciences in 2012. Both to 2018 and 19, he got um, uh, elected as Web of Science highly cited researcher. So um, could this lab actually uh, contribute um, uh, more than 100 papers and book chapters. Um, he really, really uh, actually uh, have coached a lot of uh, uh, outstanding uh, trainees now very active in both academia and the industry. 
So I'm really excited to look for um, to uh, looking forward to your talk, Kaji. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Chen, for the very generous introduction, and also for inviting me to uh, present our recent work here. So it's a really pre pleasure uh, to talk here. And, and uh, so, uh, so I have to find a way. Okay. Uh, so the title um, of my talk today is a regulation of T-cell differentiation by three-dimensional chromatin interactions. And uh, as you all know that uh, hematopoiesis originates uh, in bone marrow, uh, and then basically starting from hematopoid stem cells, which differentiate to multipotent progenitor cells, and then common lymph lymphocytes are progenitor cells. And after that, then cells migrate to thymus to start the differentiation to T cells. And uh, starting from uh, early uh, 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 T progenitor cells, ETPs, and then to double negative with two, DNA3, DNA4, and uh, double uh, positive cells. And then finally mature to single positive CD4 or CD8 T cells. And during this process, actually, T cell commitment occurs only between DNA2 and uh, the DNA3 stage because ETPs and DNA2 can also differentiate into uh, NK cells, dendritic cells, or mass cells. But starting from DNA3, the cells can only go to the T cell lineages. Therefore, something happens uh, dramatic to this step. So in order to understand uh, what actually controls this kind of T-cell fate uh, commitment, we turn it to the nucleus uh, and uh, to understand the regulation by chromatin structure. As you all know that in the nucleus in, of, uh, in the mammalian genome, the double-stranded DNA is wrapped around histone octamer to form a nucleosome structure. Then rounds of this nucleosome forms so-called beads on the strain structure like this. And then by incorporation of linker histone H1, so this structure is condensed to form this kind of a 30 nanometer fiber, which usually is inactive. And then this fiber can be further organized into loops like 30, uh, and uh, demonstrated by here. Then finally, to form even a higher order chromatin folding, which can be visualized under a microscope. From uh, this structure, actually, uh, the chromatin can be further modified by different mechanisms. For example, by DNA methylation, by his modifications, and by nucleosome position relative to underlying DNA, and also chromatin accessibility. And all of these chromatin modifications actually have been demonstrated to regulate transcription of underlying genes. And, and uh, most of these actually have been well, very well studied in gene regulation in the immune system. And, and uh, but chromatin looping, this step, and, and uh, so uh, has not been fully understood. So that's why we focus on chromatin looping uh, during the last several years. So um, the, this, uh, first, I, I will just tell you a, a brief story about the global changes of a three-dimensional chromatin interaction that are associated with T-cell fate commitment during early development. Uh, and uh, uh, so to, for this study, basically, we first isolated the, the well-described uh, stages of a differentiation from a hematopoietic stem cells to MPP, CLPs, and then from a thymus, ETP, DNA2, DNA3, DNA4, and the DP cells. We systematically analyze the chromatin accessibility, chromatin interaction, gene expression, and also uh, various uh, chip seek data set on his modifications. But for today's then, I'll just briefly tell you some results related with the chromatin interaction in these cells. Chromatin interaction is 
analyzed mainly by a popular method called high C. Uh, and uh, the principle of high C is like this. In the nucleus, when different regions of a chromatin is brought together um, to proximity by protein-protein interactions like this. And then after cross-linking to stabilize these interactions, then the DNA can be cleaved with the restraining enzymes like this. Then the cleaved DNA ends can be re-ligated based on their proximity uh, and to form this kind of you know, covalent DNA uh, bridging or uh, ligation. And after this, uh, so the ligated fragments are analyzed by next gen generation sequencing. And, and then this sequencing information can be used to understand two kinds of aspects. One is called AB compartments, the other is topologically associated domains or tasks. AB compartment, basically A compartment contains active genes, B compartment is a repressive, therefore contains uh, repressed genes. So this is a, just one demonstration of the AB comp compartment information. Uh, this gene called uh, MES1 is a gene known to be functional in hematopoietic stem cells and, and, and uh, therefore is in the A compartment represented by you know, the red signal. And then during differentiation from HSC to DP cells uh, along this line, so this compartment is flipped from A to B or from active to passive, represented from red color to blue color. Then in opposite, the, uh, another gene, BCL11B, which is required for uh, conversion, uh, basically uh, for the fate, T cell fate commitment from DN2 to, to DN3 stage, and also for the later T cell function. As you can see that it is in a B compartment in hematopoietic stem, stem cells. Then during differentiation process, then it's gradually converted to A compartment as represented by the red signal. So globally, we identified actually 456 uh, compartment converted from A to B uh, and, and about 700 converted from uh, B to A during the differentiation from hematopoietic stem cells to uh, T cells. Then we analyze to see how they change, what's the, uh, during the process. As you can see that from this cluster analysis, actually a most significant change actually occurs between, you know, at this stage from DN2 to DN3. You can see this, uh, uh, this line. Therefore, you know, uh, this global conversion actually is correlated to from, with the DN2 to DN3 T cell fate commit, uh, commitment. So this suggests that loss of cell plasticity and the commitment to T lineages are associated with the drastic reorganization of AB compartments. So what about the tasks or topological domains? How do they change? So these are the typical demonstration or confirmation of a task structure. Basically from the high C results, you usually see this kind of triangular you know, uh, confirmation. And uh, this, one of these is called a one tad. Uh, and the signal intensity uh, or the redness uh, of the signal indicate the level of interaction within task. You can see that the signal basically is high within task, but low between task. So that, so that means that the interaction between different regions is high within a domain, but across the domain, the interaction level is low. So the intensity of the interaction within a TAD is measured by a score or called a TAD score. 
So the higher the score, then the higher the interaction. So we analyze the change of the score. Basically, uh, there are about in the 280 that show decrease, the score show decrease, significant decrease uh, during the differentiation from HIC to DPs. And about 330 that show increase uh, during the differentiation. Again, you can see that the dramatic change of the score occurs between DN2 and DN3 along, you see this line. So this also then indicated that the drastic change of test score uh, actually is correlated with T cell fate commitment at this DN2 to DN3 transition. So <clears throat> these results suggest that large scale concerted changes of a chromatin organization, including local accessibility I didn't show here, and the long range interaction that established an energy barrier to prevent the cell, cells to revert their phage. So they are locked in the T cell lineage phage. So this is the early, uh, T cell for the commitment. So next then, we want to understand how these kind of epigenetic changes regulate this uh, 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 effective T cell differentiation. As you know that after mature, uh, uh, maturing of T cells in thymus to form either single positive T cell, T CD4 T cells or CD8 T cells, then the CD4 T cells can further differentiate into different effector lineages, like TH1, TH2, TH17, or TREC cells. And each of these uh, T helper cells uh, mediates a different uh, immune functions, like uh, autoimmune diseases or anti-tumor immunity. And so each differentiation of this each each T helper cells requires uh, a different uh, key transformer factors like a T bed FUNS3 for TH1 or GAT3 for TH2. So for their epigenetic modification changes, actually uh, about 14 years ago, uh, we analyzed their global H3 key four trimethylation, this is an active mark, or H3 key 27 trimethylation, a repressive mark in these different T helper cells. Actually, we found that for the signature cytokine genes or for the key uh, transformer factor genes, they are actually associated with active uh, epigenome mark H3 key four trimethylation as expected in their respective expression lineages, like for example, interferon gamma or TBET in T helper TH1 cells. So, but for the, these genes <clears throat> in the non-expressive lineages, uh, like a, a TBET in TH2 cells or TBET in T-REC cells, for example, is not expressed, it is, the genes associated with a bivalent modification pattern. We, that means with both K4 trimethylation and a K27 trimethylation, suggesting that it's prepared uh, for a kind of a plasticity. And therefore, um, you know, these results are suggesting that a kind of epigenetic mechanism may underlie the specificity and the plasticity of effectors, effectors and our regulatory T cells. Actually, we tested that um, by uh, incubating or culturing TH1 cells under T REC conditions, then the cells uh, can be converted to T REC cells. And also by culturing T REC cells, then the cells can be converted into TH1 cells, you know, suggesting you know, the plasticity. Uh, of different T helper cells. So to understand further the mechanism, how uh, you know these cells are controlled by 
this key haste modif uh, uh, modifications, we want to inf investigate the function uh, for the enzymes that regulate H3 key 4 methylation. It is known that K4 methylation is regulated by multiple different enzymes, including set D1A or different MLL complexes. In particular, <clears throat> MLL4 or KDM2D, the mutations are associated with uh, many types of cancer, uh, and including pediatric congenital disorder, Kabuto syndromes, and also um, other congenital heart diseases. And in mammals, <clears throat> MLL4 has been reported to shape enhanced landscape during uh, adipogenesis and myogenesis <clears throat> by um, Kegel's lab. <clears throat> Our question was, uh, what is the role in T cell differentiation and how does it contribute to the process? So to do this, <clears throat> so first we analyze uh, ML4 deletion mice and found that actually the deletion of ML4 leads to reduced T reg number in the thymus. Uh, and for uh, as you can see that, so this is the control Y type cells after ML4 deletion, the T reg cell number as shown by the Y axis reduced dramatically uh, and suggesting that uh, ML4 is indeed uh, required for T reg cell differentiation. So how does it regulate the uh, cells? It is known that, <clears throat> uh, so to do this, actually we analyze the chromatin interaction uh, uh, in uh, T-Rex cells using the uh, high C assay. And then after we obtained the high C libraries and the sequencing data, we separated the genome into two KB bins or two KB windows. Uh, and uh, so about uh, one million to two million windows of two KB in size. Then analyze to see how many windows show changes in interaction intensity for the whole genome. And uh, this OT represents random regions, two KB windows. <clears throat> As you can see that only <clears throat> a small number of windows show increase or decrease in the genome by deletion of ML4. But at enhancer regions, particularly super enhancers, we see almost 30% of the two KB windows show decreased interaction, but a very small number show increased interaction. Even for regular enhancers, almost, almost 11, 12% show in decreased interaction. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> this, so this result suggests that ML4 regulate chromatin interaction in this kind of enhancer regions in the gen genome, therefore suggesting that it may regulate the ex expression transcriminal transcription uh, uh, for uh, critical genes in T Rex cells. So how does it uh, regulate FOXP3 because that is a key transcription factor for T Rex? differentiation. It is known that <clears throat> there are multiple enhancers uh, that are regulated FOXP3 expression uh, and uh, demonstrated by multiple labs previously in, in literature. And we ask whether and how does ML4 regulate the FOXP3 expression. So to do this, <clears throat> we first analyze ML4 binding uh, in the genome using ChIP-seq assay. As you can see in the FOXP3 genomic region, uh, and we found one major binding size for ML4, that's about 8 KB to 10 KB upstream of the FOXP3 promoter. Therefore, it does not bind to FOXP3 promoter directly, but bonds to this up 10 KB upstream. And then consistent with the multiple enhancers in this region, there are multiple H3K4 monomethylation peaks. Each peak may represent a potential enhancer. So the question is, how does this bonding size regulate 
Fox V3 promoter or enhancer. So to understand this, we use the high C interaction data. This is the high C or the path that links this region, this M4 binding size uh, to other interacting regions. As you can see that this interact, inter interact with uh, the promoter or with uh, this uh, potential enhancer or another enhancer, suggesting that M4 may regulate other enhancer or promoter through this kind of interaction. So the question is whether this Emerald for binding size indeed regular to other regions or not. Actually, we use a CRISPR to de delete this binding size and then analyze the K4 uh, methylation. Again, as you can see that after deletion of this Emerald for binding size, we found the promoter region of FOXP3, you see the signal decrease and his modification, K4 monopathization decreased. And this enhancer region also decreased. And the other regions also linked with the, uh, this binding size also showed decreased signals. So the question is whether MRO4 binding site to regulate Fox3 expression or not. So using the in vitro TRX differentiation assay, we found that uh, in, as shown by the red line, we show in, indeed Fox P expression level decrease uh, in the uh, this CRISPR uh, knockout cells by deleting this M level binding size. So therefore, uh, this result suggests that M level regulates Fox P three expression through chromatin looping. So it it bonds to this CS zero region and then forms a chromatin loop and therefore regulate fox 3 expression. So uh, this also demonstrated by uh, uh, Sakakuchi labs and also um, uh, uh, other labs. Uh, so finally then we want to, to ask whether ML4 regulated the differentiation for other T helper cells. So again, to do this, we use the in vitro. Uh, so this actually is a, a story we recently published on the critical roles for in yang regulation of internal gamma expression in tissue homeostasis. And, and, and uh, uh, so similar to the TREC differentiation, we use an in vitro T trimine differentiation and I find actually uh, ML4 knockout uh, interferon gamma surprisingly uh, was upregulated compared to white type cells using early uh, differentiation or later differentiation, suggesting that somehow ML4 may repress or they repress interferon gamma expression. But how does ML4 regulate or repress the uh, interferon gamma expression? Um, because it is known that interferon gamma is regulated by uh, STAT4 and a TBX or TBATCH. So we want to see whether uh, these regulators change or not. Actually, as you can see that, uh, you know, these regulators are not changed. Uh, so suggesting that, you know, ML4 may directly regulate the interferon gamma gene expression by modulating its epigenetic status because Anyway, uh, in any case, it's a uh, uh, histone K4 monomethylation regulating enzyme. So uh, interferon gamma has been, ex uh, its expression or regulation has been extensively studied in, uh, during the last decades or so, and by many labs. Uh, through these studies, and then about dozens of potential regulatory elements uh, have been identified uh, as shown by these uh, red blocks across the, this genomic region. So to investigate whether ML4 and how ML4 regulate this interferon gamma expression direct, directly, so we again analyze 
uh, AMR4 binding profiles using ChIP-seq and also K4 monomethylation profiles. Uh, as you can see that AMR4 is enriched in mainly in this uh, CS22 region, CS-22 region, as shown by this peak. And uh, although, you know, there are uh, an, dozens of uh, K4 monomethylation peaks in this region, which are correlated with this uh, 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 hypersensitive chromatin size, uh, as shown by the red blocks. So this suggests that ML4 may regulate interferon gamma expression through this minus 22. But the minus 22 is an active enhancer uh, for interferon gamma expression. So how does it regulate the you know, repression uh, uh, for interferon gamma? So to check this, we analyze h 3 k 4 monomethylation uh, in knockout cells. So actually, you know, looking at the global pattern, there are no major changes. The Y type and the knockout, very similar pattern, except at this particular size. Uh, and uh, we, see, we see decreased levels of K4 monomethylation at this site. So this site uh, actually is not highly conserved uh, in the sequence. But when comparing with the human cells, we found that the K4 monomethylation actually was conserved. Therefore, we named this site as CNS minus 28. So to test whether this site is indeed functional for uh, regulating the interferon gamma expression, we deleted about 1.5 kb uh, in this region. And uh, so this, this region actually uh, is bound by GATA3 uh, in naive CD4 T cells, with, as is shown by a peak, a chip seek peak. So uh, the, after deletion of this site, this region, and uh, using the in vitro differentiation assay, we see internal gamma expression was decreased, uh, increased again, uh, as compared between Y type and uh, knockout cells in TH0, TH1 cells, but no change was detected in TH17 and T-Rex cells. And so, so indicating that indeed, this region uh, somehow suppresses internal gamma expression. So to pinpoint the functional elements in this region, we then uh, deleted a much smaller region of 156 base pairs that's within the GATA3 binding size, and, and uh, this which contained the uh, two GATA3 binding motifs as shown by the red uh, uh, sequences. So after deletion, actually we examined the GATA3 binding uh, level and found that, uh, as you can see that indeed, uh, deletion of this small region uh, resulted in decreased, uh, in, uh, uh, decreased GATA3 binding as shown by this uh, uh, this column in, in the CSS28 deletion cells. But it's binding not affected at this uh, min CS plus 55 uh, element. So using this in vitro differentiation again, so we detect increased interferon gamma expression in the deletion cells. And also, uh, we detected increased lymphocytes infiltration in these 40 weeks old mice. So suggesting kind of a, a chronic inflammation uh, related with this, this CS28 deletion. So to test this directly, uh, we used the colitis model actually by transferring either wire type or uh, CS20 deletion cells into the rank two deletion mice. As you can see that uh, CS28 deletion led to uh, a severe uh, weight loss over several weeks of time comparing the knockout mice with the white type mice and also severe uh, uh, tissue damage. So suggesting that indeed 
uh, deletion of uh, CNS28 caused chronic uh, auto uh, with immune uh, inflammation. So because interferon gamma is not only expressed uh, in uh, CD4 T cells, but also expressed in CD8 and NK, NK cells. So we analyzed interferon gamma expression in these cells and I found uh, also in CD8 T cells, interferon gamma expression was increased by deletion CD8, CD, CNS28. And the same thing is true for NK cells. So, so it's suggesting that uh, CNS, uh, interferon gamma expression are also repressed by CNS28 in this kind of unit immune cells. And to test this, actually, we found that uh, Listeria infection has actually uh, caused increased levels of uh, interferon gamma expression uh, by in a deletion of CS28, and also the infection was controlled better by deleting CS28 uh, in the mice. So, our next question then, uh, how does CS28 uh, repress interferon gamma expression? As I showed earlier that ML4 deletion did not cause severe epigenetic changes of the interferon gamma uh, locus. So only difference was shown was detected at the CS28 region. And the same thing, was true for deletion of CNS28. So only thing change we detect, the only change we detected was the decreased K4 monomethylation and the K4 trimethylation at the CNS minus 28 region, only this region. No other changes was detected. So then we reason that maybe the chromatin looping was regulated by uh, this CS minus 28 region. So therefore we uh, analyzed chromatin interaction in this Y type and this, uh, mutant T cells using high C assay. So this is the results of high C analysis uh, in Y type CD4 T cells. Uh, either ML4 knockout or Y type cells. As you can see, that indeed globally, we detect increased uh, interaction uh, in the regions from, say, uh, uh, these are intermediate ranges of interaction, you know, the interaction from 10 kb to about uh, several hundred k, uh, kb to, or, 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 uh, to a million. Uh, base pairs, and, and uh, but for the long, really long range interaction, uh, that interaction level decreased. Basically, these are compartment level, and this may be a domain level, test domain level. So, um, this is the global analysis. Then we want to look to see whether there's there are changes at the interferon gamma domain. So actually, this is a TAD domain. See in Y type cells, this is interferon gamma gene. And as you can see that, you know, there's a high level, pretty high level C interaction in Y type cells. But in, after deletion of ML4, we see some of very, very minor changes, but the changes are not really uh, significant. So it's difficult to tell if there is any specific change or not. Uh, and so this suggests that maybe the high C assay is not sensitive enough. And therefore we need a more sensitive technique to detect the interaction changes caused by ML4 deletion at this interferon gamma region. So to do this actually, so we de developed a more sensitive assay we call it trunk looping. Uh, and uh, so the principle of a trunk looping is that we use this is a TN5, which, which is a DNA transposes. And uh, then this forms a uh, bivalent complex like this. 
this is a uh, one uh, end for this uh, complex. This is the other end of the complex in the middle, which is a biotinylated oligo. So when we add this to the cells, so this complex, one end of this complex will be uh, transposed into one region of a chromatin. And then the other end of complex will transpose into the other region of chromatin. So if these two chromatin are interacting with each other, then therefore they will be close uh, in the space or in proximity. So the, which will form by this DNA transposition, a DNA or oligonucleotide bridge will be established between these two interacting chromatin regions. Therefore, we can isolate these regions and then direct amplify these regions through PCR assays. And then finally, sequence these amplified regions. Then by this way, we can identify these uh, chromatin regions that interact with each other. So this is the principle, very simple. Does it work? So we used resting CD4 T cells and uh, stimulated CD4 T cells to test this technique. And uh, then obtained libraries from this assay and also from inside to high C assay. And uh, showing this is the data showing uh, the interleukin two genomic locus. As you can see from the ataxic signals, there are several, you know, uh, there are there's a high hypersensitivities at the promoter region and several enhancers in uh, both naive and uh, stimulated uh, T cells. From the high C assay, and uh, we can also see a domain or tag domain like structure. And uh, we see the increased signal. You see this blue signal, then more blue, so increased interaction. But it's very difficult to pinpoint which enhancers are interacting with uh, the IL2 uh, promoter. So what about the track looping assay? And uh, as you can see, this is the resting and it is activated T cells. So now we see the almost a crystal clear, you know, interaction by the elevated red signals. You know, these dots are really the interaction site. For example, this dot connecting this enhancer and with this promoter. So this enhancer and this promoter. So very clear interaction. By this assay, we could identify every specific promoter enhancer or enhancing enhancer interactions. However, there is a problem. Trunk looping takes seven days to make a library and it requires 100 million cells. So not practical for 100 million cells. So we need to approve this technique. Therefore, that's the high track we developed very recently. Uh, and uh, so high track now you know, requires much less time and also much fewer cells to make a library. So this works. And then we first apply this to human cells, GM12878 and KFX22 cells. So we obtained about 200 million unique pairs from each cell type. And then these are the loops we identified for GM cells, for example. Very clear cut loops. And, and, and you see from the heat map dot to dot structure. And, and uh, in total, we identified about 90,000 chromatin loops linking promoter to promoter or promoter or enhancer to enhancer uh, uh, regions. So, these 90,000 loops, what are they in the genome? So we checked and we found that about 70% of them actually are linking either enhancer to enhancer or enhancer to promoter. And then there are about 15% uh, linking uh, these other regions, which are actually domain boundaries. So. Uh, we could now, using this assay, identify almost all enhancer, enhancer, and enhancer promoter interactions. So, what are the do they are they functional? So, it is known previously that interactions between, you know, test domain 
boundaries or interaction between enhancer and promoters or in promoter promoters, we can regulate uh, the transcriptional level of specific genes within this uh, structure. But it is not known what functions are between enhancer enhancer interactions. And for example, in this region, genomic region, just a random genomic region, this is the promoter. And then there is a promoter to enhance interactions linked by this arc. And also there is a enhance enhance interactions in this region, for example, between this arc. So what is the function between these interaction between these two enhancers? So to test this, actually we deleted these enhancers as uh, as shown by this uh, Caesar uh, signal using the uh, CRISPR assay, then analyze the gene expression. So this is the RNA-seq signal. In control cells, the signal is pretty high, but after deleting this uh, E2, this enhancer, this enhancer links to the promoter directly. So it caused decreases in uh, gene expression level, RNA-6 signal. And uh, by deleting E3 and E5, these are two enhancers that do not interact with the promoter, but they interact with the other enhancers. This also decreases the RNA-6 signals. So this data indicates that these enhancers also <clears throat> regulate the promoter expression of this gene. So this is expression, but do they change the interaction level of this promoter, even though they are not interacting with this promoter directly? So we applied this uh, uh, high track you know, to analyze the uh, interaction in these in this cells. Just focus on this promoter region, this one. So this is the interaction level. We count all the paths originating from this promoter. So the level is high. And then by deleting this uh, uh, E2, this is the blue column, this one, we see dramatically decreased interaction. The total number of paths decreased. But by deleting E3 and E5, the, these do not directly interact with this promoter. This also decreased the uh, interaction. This indicates that uh, even though this E2 and E3 do not directly interact with the promoter, but it also regulated the interaction of the promoter region. Therefore, enhancer-enhancer interactions contribute to transcription of targeted genes, and the interaction network may be disrupted by deleting any node of the, inter of the network, not necessarily di directly interacting with the other node, any node. So with this, and then we can apply high track to the ML4 deletion or CS-28 deletion cells, and then check to see whether the interaction is changed or not. So this is the white type cells. We analyze using high track assay. Now, as you can see that, so this is the interferon gamma promoter region, the promoter, gene promoter here. And then this is a minus 22, a strong enhancer, and a minus 34 enhancer for, no enhancer for interferon gamma. And this is the CS28, the potential regulatory element repressor we identified. As you can see that, in white type cells, we see pretty strong interaction in this small domain. And this is the number of paths linking directly you know, these different regions. So pretty strong interaction. And also minus 22 interact actually with the promoter. This is the number of paths detected. So what about in ML4 deletion cells? So globally, as you can see, we see decreased levels of interaction by the heat map by counting the paths linking the, the different regions. You see, this is 25, this is seven, D 
decreased between minus 28 and minus 22. And then the linking promoter regions, this is a four, this is seven, increase. So this is the in MR4 cells. What about in uh, CS minus 28 deletion cells? So this is the uh, key for monomethylation level looking like this. So this is the Y type signal. And this is the uh, signal by deleting the CS28 region. You see, this is the strong interaction in Y type cells. And after deleting the minus uh, 28 region, we see significantly decreased interaction in this local region, but increased interaction between the enhancer minus 22 and the promoter. <laughs> so these results actually suggest that, <clears throat> as summarized uh, by a nice preview of article by Ian and, and uh, 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 Pohalek, uh, this is published in Immunity. So <clears throat> CNS minus 28 <clears throat> tethers the enhancer CS 22 and CS 20, uh, 32, so forms a local chromatin structure. This local chromatin structure prevents these enhancers to interact directly with the target promoter interferon gamma. <clears throat> Therefore, by this way, represses the expression <clears throat> of interferon gamma. But after deleting minus 28, then these enhancers can now interact with the <clears throat> interferon gamma. Therefore, interferon gamma expression level is increased. By this way, <clears throat> in white type cells, so the type one immunity and the type two immunity can be kept at a balance, but the balance is still disrupted by deleting minus uh, <clears throat> 28 region. So, In, conclu in conclusion, we demonstrated that the global changes of chromatin interaction correlates uh, with the T cell fate commitment during early development. And the ML4 regulated enhancer enhancer promoter interaction is crit critical for the expression of a Fox, Fox P3 expression. And the ML4 regulated chromatin interaction plays an important role in maintaining that silent state at, of the interferon gamma gene. Therefore, the take home message is that long this interaction between promoter enhancers are critical for the regulation of gene expression and therefore for T cell differentiation and the immune response. So the question is then, how the chromatin loops are regulated specifically. And, and it is known that, you know, the chromatin loops between boundary uh, regions are regulated by CDCF and also by cohesion, cohesion complex. But there are many uh, enhancer promoter interactions which are either shared between different cell types or uh, specific for each cell type. And we demonstrated previously in these pub publications that uh, sequence transmitter factors like uh, uh, HCF, uh, HCFC1 and ZF143 are responsible for enhancer promoter interactions uh, in uh, GM and also KFOX2 cells. And also in this, uh, uh, Immune systems, we demonstrate that ML4 is important for uh, the enhancer promoter interactions or enhancer enhancer interactions uh, in T-Rex cells and T-Rex cells. And what factors are responsible for other cell types uh, and uh, uh, different t herber cells or different uh, uh, dif uh, developmental stages in, in early hematopoietic differentiation or development? So there must be other sequences, specific factors that are important, for example, GATA3 or TBET or uh, TSCF1. 
So which will be studied uh, in future, then they should play a really important role in uh, T cell or immune functions. And this is the last slide. And finally, I want to thank people who did the work in my lab and the current lab members, Ya Qiang, Cao, Karen, Cui, and Xue Liu, uh, uh, and Qiong Sun, who really uh, played re important roles for various products I, dem I presented today. And also previous lab members, uh, like uh, uh, Kasha Plachek, or, and uh, Gang Qiong Hu, Wen Fei, and Bing Bing, uh, really made important contributions to the stories uh, uh, I presented here and also many other stories I did not show. And all of them have their independent labs, uh, either in Europe, in the United States, or in China now. And also, I have a really a number of uh, excellent and very nice collaborators, and which are essential for our uh, work uh, and uh, I could present today or not have time to show you today, and including Chen Wu and, uh, um, uh, and, and also Wang Jun and uh, Kai Ge, Zhang Wuxie, Bill Po, and uh, Alan Rothenberg and uh, Jeff uh, Zhu. And, and uh, I want to thank all of them and for their help uh, and uh, so that we could, could work uh, efficiently and pleasantly. Uh, at NIH. And uh, thank you at the end. I'd like to take any questions if you have.